So off camera, I went up to 80 grit on all these. Yeah, it's a lot different. Got the hollow, I mean, hollow ground, compound ground. I will say, you know, grinding when you don't have to film is so much faster. You don't have to set anything up. You just grind right to it. But I rather enjoy making these videos. You know, I've learned like the editing. I'm getting better at editing and all that. It's all a learning experience. So come, you know, play fun. So. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. I actually took time, I cleaned up my shop video here. Well, I finally buckled down and cleaned the shop. Took about three hours to do it. But man, finally got everything clean. Well, I had to pile the wheels up there, but it's kind of clean. <laughs> Floor's all nice and done. No belts. I did have to just drill that aluminum block from my 14 inch contact wheel, so that doesn't count. <laughs> and cut it out. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, nice and clean. Came out here, got this all cleaned up. Lathe is all nice and clean. Got new belts all hanging up here. Now I just have to figure out to do what to do with this and that. <laughs> Old belts. These are definitely trash, but those are actually pretty good, some of them, you know, for handles and all that. All right. I, I figured out the 14 inch wheel. I made a riser block for it. It doesn't go on the regular tool arm. You gotta make a riser block and lift it up above the arm. I'll insert some footage here. I'm glad I posted that the other day about 14 inch wheel. A couple people told me, even KMG, they sell like a riser. So you had to make a separate riser. Here's the tool arm to bring it up. So now it's way off the bottom. Yeah, so anyone that gets a KMG and wants a 14 inch wheel, remember you gotta either make a riser or buy a riser. I think making is a lot better, but anyway. All right, so back to business. I have had this piece of stainless steel for over a year, almost two maybe. Because I always wanted to do bolstered knives, you know, with a bolstered handle. And I've never done wood until I did that kitchen knife. But all my handles are removable scales. If you watch any of my past videos, all of them are removable scales. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'll do some bolsters with uh, stainless steel, uh, yeah, stainless steel bolsters and the wooden handle. I'll do one in ebony and one in that uh, curly maple. And then these two I'll just do with the regular uh, removable scales like I always do. So what I'm thinking is you gotta lay it out first so I can drill the holes right. But, uh, yeah, so, let's see, we're gonna have the bolster probably about here. Yeah, maybe even come to, uh, like that. So I'm gonna need two holes here. I've even had pin material. Look at all this pin material I've had. Oh, but the pins. Now this, was for the uh, 14 inch wheel, so that doesn't count. And this is, uh, I don't know what that's for, anyway. Yeah, one of these is titanium though, for anodizing, when I actually get to some titanium, I can anodize the titanium to different colors. I'm gonna build a power supply for that and all that. But I digress, the rest of these are just uh, stainless steel pins that I've been wanting to do, so. Well, a bit of a problem. I think I might have to order new pins. This is titanium. If you look here, I hit it with the torch and it turned purple. Different heats and different anodizers turns different colors. I couldn't figure out which one of these is titanium. I heated all the ends. And, uh, 
they all kind of look the same. <laughs> yeah, they all kind of feel the same. I know a couple are stainless and there's one is titanium. So, uh, you know, I could spark test it. Turn on the belt grinder and just spark test it. This one, I thread it for that uh, friction lock. So I don't think this one's titanium. So, this one has a little bit of color. I think this is the titanium. Let's see. Let's check out the sparks on this bad boy. Alright. Red sparks, not titanium. Red sparks, not titanium. <laughs> Maybe I lost the titanium rod. Maybe that's why they're not. I guess I put the titanium rod somewhere else. Let's see. See those white sparks? So that means none of these are titanium. Huh. I must have put it somewhere else. So these must all be stainless because it didn't turn purple like this and it didn't white spark. Huh. Looks like I got to find some titanium. <laughs> but I'm going to order new pins anyway. Titanium sparks like a madman and it'll set your house on fire if you're not careful. So whenever you're grinding titanium, clean up all the dust because those sparks burn white and they don't go out. Yeah. So what I think is we'll do, yeah, two eighth inch here for the bolster, but I kind of want to do like a hidden bolster. And then we'll do the two for the pins and then a lanyard. So, you know, that's what I'm thinking now. So hopefully that'll work out good. And these, you know, this is the easy, you just, you know, all somewhere around here, all somewhere around here, and then the lanyard. And that's how those all go. So, uh, I'm not gonna bore you laying all these out, cause, uh, you know, it's just me sitting here drawing on a piece of metal. Um, yeah, so I'll meet you over at the drill press. All right, all right, so anyone that's ever watched me for a while knows I love these centering punches. These centering drills, they work amazing. So I'm just gonna put the holes in with these and then we'll move to our eighth inch bits and our quarter inch bits or whatever. Yeah, always keep your chuck chained to your drill bit <laughs> or your drill press. And another thing is good is to have one of these so when you're drilling, if it helicopters, it hits that and doesn't grab, you know, it won't go anywhere and spin out of your hands and bite your hands or whatever. All right, here we go. And this one is just the three because I'm not putting bolsters. Let's do it. All right, let me do the other two and then I'll be back with the drill uh, bits in. All right, you got the eighth inch bit in there. Make sure it goes through the holes of the one, two, three block. Line it up. Here's our eighth inch holes. Yeah, before you tighten it up, always make sure to uh, test it running straight. 
because you don't want to tighten it up and it be all wonky. And... All right, here we go. That's one thing, these molybdenum dioxide fits really grab, so be careful, it'll pull it right out of your hand. That's why it's always good to have a clamp or something behind. I don't like to clamp it in a vise, because then if you're wrong, you know, you got it tight and it won't move. I mean, some things with precision, you want it tight and you don't want it to move. You just have to kind of do it by experience. I've said this before, you can feel as you're going through with the one, two, three block under it, as it starts to give, you want to kind of let up on the blade, but hold it, hold it firm, but kind of let up so it goes through. Let me get the other two done and then, uh, yeah, we'll put on the deburrs and move on to something else. All right, so when I deburr, I like to use these four point ones. Don't use these ones that are just like one point or two point. They don't work good at all and they, you know, they're garbage and they drop on the floor. <laughs> yeah, but try to always get the four points of the, that way you'll get a better, uh, even chamfer. And make sure to tighten it down. <laughs> Looks like I forgot one. <laughs> Oops. All right, well, I'll see you over the table. I'm gonna drill and deburr this. All right. So let's get to cleaning these. I got some distilled water, got my clay. You know what I'm gonna do this time? I'm not gonna uh, put the anise scale on first. I'm gonna put the clay on first and see what we got from there. See how that works. I got some, <laughs> I got some stuff that likes to fall on the floor. I got some cups just to put my clay in and make, maybe mix it down a little bit. Cause I don't want to mix this whole thing, so we'll just do a little bit at a time. Actually, that looks pretty uh, <laughs> soupy there. I don't know if it needs any water. Let's... Last time, sometimes the handle goes in. <laughs> now that I got it on with that, we'll just take it, kind of knead down how we want it, maybe cut it in a little bit here and there. Make sure it's going down good. All right, that's one side. And then what I'll do is I'll let this dry and I'll come back tomorrow and I'll take a wet cloth and just go up into the spots I don't want it. Maybe wipe it off. All right. You don't want to go too close to the edge because you're going to, you know, as you use this knife, you're going to sharpen it up and sharpen it up. So, you know, you want to leave as much edge as possible that's hardened. All right, so there we 
go. Once it sets up a little bit, I'll come back and tune it up. We'll just hang this up right here, let it dry. On to the next one. All right. Yeah, so I don't need to have water. I guess I don't need these cups. Oops. See how this one works out for this one. Next one. I made sure to clean all these off with uh, acetone and stuff. You know, made sure they were all clean before I started this. Get this back to the handle. Blade number two. Paint it up. I think those two were the W2. You can tell by there was no like rust on it or nothing. And this has a little bit of rust and all that. But W2 seems to be a lot more shinier too. I think I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> you put it on thick, you wipe it out. Spread it out like peanut butter. <laughs> then you come back, you put a little bit on your tip and then you just touch it to where you want it to come down. Make sure you get a little bit more. Yeah. See how that does. <laughs> oh, I already did this side. <laughs> Alrighty. Now I think when I'm gonna when it dries out a little bit more, I'll come back here and make sure it's tacky and stuck to the blade a little bit more. I noticed a couple times when I did it that uh like it would come off. When I dumped, dunked it in the oil or whatever, the clay fell off. So we kind of want to try to avoid that. Last one. Here we go. Except they don't have a hook to hang it on. <laughs> All right. Last one. Last but not least. There we go. Should be interesting. So I think that's about it. I'm just gonna let these dry overnight. I'll come back in a few hours or so and maybe touch them up a little bit here and there. Then tomorrow we'll put on our anti-scale and then we'll let that dry and we'll be ready for heat treat. So, uh, Closer and closer to this Park 50 McMaster car uh, test run. Man, it feels good to have a nice clean shop. I can actually walk around. There's not belts all over the floor. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, please comment, and subscribe. And as always, take it easy.